Hey friends, Pastor Jack here. I wanted to be able to walk you through a passage of scripture that I love. I've talked about this passage of scripture for years and actually I incorporate elements of this passage of scripture when we do personal prayer sessions with people here at Trinity Church or in our context or even around the world. Now this is the story of a man named Bartimaeus and you can find it in Mark 10, 46 through 52. And I'm gonna tell you what it says and then I'm gonna tell you about one of the reasons why I love it so much. So this is what it says. It says, and they came to Jericho and as he was leaving Jericho with his disciples and a great crowd, Bartimaeus, a blind beggar, the son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And many rebuked him, telling him to be silent. But he cried out all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stopped and said, call him. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, get up, he's calling you. And throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. And Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? And the blind man said to him, Rabbi, let me recover my sight. And Jesus said to him, Go your way, your faith has made you well. And immediately he recovered his sight and followed him on the way. This is an amazing story, and I love the way that Jesus stops the action and calls to this person who's been calling out to him from, the, from kind of the sides and the periphery. But one of the reasons why I love this passage is because it seems to me like Jesus' question is kind of absurd, right? I mean, if he's going to stop the action and, and he's going to respond to Bartimaeus, who's this blind beggar sitting by the side of the road, and he's going to tell him to call him and come to him, then what is the first thing he's going to ask him? I mean, what, should it really be, what do you want me to do for you? I mean, if you're like me, I kind of read this passage and I'm like, duh, Jesus, the guy's blind. I mean, it should be obvious what he wants and what he needs, but that's not what Jesus actually says. He actually asks Bartimaeus, what do you want me to do for you? Now, I don't think Jesus is trying to be a game show host here. I don't think he's trying to say, like, you know, do you want what's behind door number two or any of those kinds of things. I think what Jesus is getting at here is, is, do you really know the deepest, most central desire of your heart? Have you think about it? There were all kinds of things that Bartimaeus could have said. Yes, he was blind, but we already know he was a beggar, so he was poor. Uh, he cast off his cloak. He probably had been, well, we know from like first century culture, he'd probably been ostracized. He's, he was on the periphery. He probably didn't have very many friends or any. He'd probably been distanced from his community. So like there were any number of things that he could have said. He could have said, Rabbi, I, I want to be rich. Rabbi, I, I would love to have clothes. Rabbi, I'd love to have a family. Rabbi, I'd love to have community. Rabbi, I'd love to, I got a laundry list of all the things that I would want or what I would need. But when Jesus says, what do you want? What happens is it zeroes in to asking the question of, do you know what is at the root of the thing beneath the thing beneath the thing that your heart cries out for the most? And I think sometimes in prayer, that is a critical question. It would be the idea of saying, if Jesus were to look into your eyes and say, beloved daughter, beloved son, what do you want me to do for you? The answer of, I want to win the lottery, is not really the thing. What's beneath that? Well, I want to be able to buy a car. What's beneath that? I want to be admired by my friends. What's beneath that? Like, if you keep asking the question long enough to get to the central root idea, Father, I don't want to be alone. There you go. That's the thing beneath the thing beneath the thing. And so I love this story because I feel like Jesus asks him a question that gets to the root of the issue. And then he loves him enough to be able to bring him into the fulfillment of his deep desire in a way that he can then engage God and community around him. Now again, I don't think that this passage tells us that when we just tell Jesus what we want, he's just going to give us whatever it is. But it is a good diagnostic question to ask you, do you really know what is at the deepest center of the desire and the core of your heart? And can you bring that to the feet of Jesus and lay it out in a way that makes sense? 
You know, a couple of years ago, I uh, was going to visit my mentor. He lives in Virginia. And uh, I'd been storing up for like six months all the stuff that I wanted to talk to him about. And I had a legal pad full of all these things. I want to ask you about this, and I want to pray about this, and I want to ask about this. And I remember when we got there, we kind of, we kind of like, you know, exchanged like pleasantries, and we were just kind of getting comfortable with each other. And he was like, hey, Jack, what's on your mind? And I was like, okay. I got this. I was like, I started walking down the list. And he listened, he listened as I got through about like two pages. And finally he went, no, 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 no. hold on. You get one thing. And I was like, what? He's like, you get one thing. I'm going to send you back to your hotel room, and I want you to look through your legal pad. And if you only had one thing to talk or pray about or explore with the Spirit of God in your time here with me, what would it be? And at first, it really ticked me off. I was like, dude, I've spent six months tracking and storing all of this stuff up. But you know what the exercise did? It forced me to focus everything down to one Thing. One thing that was at the core, at the heart of it all, and that gave focus for our prayer time together. So that's what I'd like to do. I'd like to close us in prayer here. It'd be the same kind of idea with Bartimaeus or the same idea that I just talked about. And, and so we're just going to try to narrow down, Father, what is the one thing that my heart cries out for to lay at your feet and to ask for you, Father, to lead, guide, guard, and direct me about what to do about it? So let's go in prayer. Abba, I thank you for my brothers and my sisters, and I thank you for the way that they are seeking you in this season. And Father, there are many things that we cry out for. As human beings, Father, we are very aware of our deficits. We are very aware of our debts. We are aware of the things that we don't have and that we perceive that we need. But Father, we bring all of those things to you right now in the name of Jesus. Father, if your son looking at us in the eyes, if we had been brought before him like Bartimaeus, and he looked into our eyes and said, Beloved son, what do you want me to do for you? What is at the core of your heart? What is beneath the desire, beneath the desire, beneath the desire? What is that thing that your soul screams out for right now? Father, I just ask that you would tell my brothers and sisters, Abba, what is that one thing right now? And now I would just ask, can you just envision, can you envision being at the feet of Jesus, just like Bartimaeus, and, and presenting that request? And can you envision whatever that might look like in your hands or, or however you see that? Can you picture putting that at his feet? Taking your hands off of it. And doing just like Jesus actually demonstrated, even later in his life when he was about to face crucifixion, stating his desire, but then saying, but nevertheless, Father, not what I want, but what you want instead. And Father, I just ask, what is one thing that you would say, reveal, or show my brothers and sisters about what you will do with that desire offered to you? Father, how will you console them how will you love them? How will you steer them? Father, how might you even need to chasten them? And I ask that in Jesus' name. Amen. Brothers and sisters, I would just remember, remind you that anything you hear in prayer should not cause you fear, shame, or guilt. That's not how the Father speaks to his children. Should not discord with Scripture. God doesn't violate his word or his character. It should not chase you farther from God.